police chief is fired for trying to reform a police department, Charlottesville. Let me go ahead and give you the highlight. Let's put up the chief, all right? A black police chief in Charlottesville. And I'm going to take it to a black firefighter in Rochester are calling out their respective departments for racism. So you're looking at Chief Brackney. Chief Brackney had been hired in the wake of the infamous Unite the Right rally back in 2017. Remember that? That's when white supremacists descended on Charlottesville and made it nationally synonymous with hate. City officials wanted her to restore public trust in a force that badly fumbled the mayhem, modernized the department and addressed racial inequities in policing that many in the city felt the march revealed. That was a job, that's a tough job, that's a tough job to do. You go into a racist environment, you're trying to root out racism, create equity, bridge the gap between cop and community. It's a hell of a job, it's a hell of a thing to do. They fired her, let's get into the details. Chief Brackney said the revelations about the 15 member SWAT team were glaring examples of what needed to be reformed in the department's culture. But when she moved to discipline, uh oh, when she moved to do her job, when she moved to hold cops accountable to the rules and the law, some of the members, it set off a chain of events that led to her firing months later. A deputy had just briefed her on an internal probe of the SWAT team. It found widespread issues, including officers making racist remarks and one apparently showing a trainee how to hide criminal misconduct. Another, according to the internal report obtained by the Washington Post, all right? In a text, one disgruntled member wrote they should take out command staff. That means kill them, okay? A comment Chief Brackney took seriously, but some officers felt, oh, <laughs> this is just people with guns blowing off steam, Chief. So the chief filed a $10 million lawsuit against the city and 10 officials this summer, alleging racial and gender discrimination, and that her firing was retaliation for her efforts to root out problematic policing. Now, let me tell you why we know this is vengeful, okay? Typically, if a department actually wants to let a cop go who's in executive leadership, those cops don't get fired even under the most extreme of circumstances. They are allowed to do what? Resign, shoot somebody in the back, you can resign. Kill an unarmed black or brown body, resign. You're allowed typically to just resign. Well, she wasn't allowed that. They did not give her that opportunity. They decided to just fire her, to make an example out of her. Let's put the picture of the mayor. This is Mayor Lloyd Snook. He said Chief Brackney's termination was about her lack of effective leadership, not reform efforts. He said rank and file officers had lost faith in her. And we're leaving, creating crisis. Keep his picture up. You know, he's actually right. That mayor is actually correct. Because the rank and file are racist SOBs. Yes, this police chief left a bad taste in his rank and file. Once again, when have you ever known a mayor to come against the police chief? Even during the most extreme of circumstances. So not only did she get fired, not allowed an opportunity to resign. The mayor comes against her. The officers are backing the mayor. You see, they're willing to eat their own, so to speak. There's no blue line for black folk, please understand this. Please understand when you put on that that blue uniform, you are still a black person in that blue uniform. I hope you understand that. 
I hope you realize the culture that you are adopting as your own. I hope you realize they're willing to do this to you. There's more. Let's put up a picture of the firefighter, okay? Meanwhile, let me take you to Rochester, New York. Fire captain allegedly pressured black firefighter Jared Jones, and we hope to have him on the show next week, to go to a party that mocked Juneteenth with racist imagery and featured images of elected officials with spikes running through them. Jones felt immediately uneasy. And his uneasiness intensified as he walked up the driveway and noticed a large cutout of former President Donald Trump as it is against department rules to attend partisan political events. They forced him to do it. According to the notice, there were two large Juneteenth celebration flags decorating the lawn with buckets of Kentucky Fried Chicken prominently displayed in an apparent use of the racist trope recycled by bigots to mock black Americans. At one point, unable to leave and unsure of how to react, Jones expressed to his fellow firefighters that he felt like he was in the film, get out. You were, sir, exactly where you were at, okay? I'm glad you made it out alive to be quite honest with you. There's more. The filing further stated that someone at the party also appeared to have been impersonating Monroe County legislator Rachel Barnhart, excuse me, acting in a sexual manner as the crowd taunted her yelling explicit comments. These are some sick SOBs. Jones was eventually able to leave the party and later went to a superior to raise the issue and ask them to address it in the filing. They said they would, but Jones was left shocked when he was assigned to work with the same captain for his next shift four days after raising the issue of racism, prompting him to pursue further action. The notice said Jones was to leave after suffering emotional distress and fear of retaliation from Crowey and others. Remember I covered a corrupt piece of you know what detective who raped many women, including according to the allegations, a 13 year old child. Put his picture up full mass here. The women that he brutalized, the black women that he brutalized will not be able to sue this cop because of a statute of limitation issue and some other dynamics. So keep his picture up. This individual, his name, is Roger Golovsky. Roger was a longtime detective, Kansas City, was accused of sexually assaulting black women and girls. He was also accused of treating them like animals. However, the state statute of limitations stops them from suing this piece of garbage. Now, legislators all across America, they have actually changed laws in order to capture some individuals who are able to escape this statute or this limitation. They have not changed the law for him. There are some left leaning candidates and elected officials in that legislature who have proposed to do so, it has not happened. Two black women who reportedly were victimized by this detective by an abusive and corrupt retired Kansas City detective are prohibited from taking civil action because of state law. According to reports, Roger Golubsky, a white man, had a thing for black women and he would use his power as a police officer to sexually exploit them. In one instance, he went so far, he decided to frame a woman's son for murder when she rejected his demands for sex, that's part of the record. We know that happened, this is not speculation, there's more. Ophelia Williams told the Kansas City Star, this detective forced himself on her after officers arrested her twin 14 year old boys in 1999. A lawyer during a disposition proceeding asked Williams if she ever called the police. 
did you ever call the police, Miss Williams? She said, no, he was the police, I- exactly. The detective worked for the Kansas City Police Department for 35 years. 35 years, his corruption reigned in that particular office with significant protection. During that time, it reportedly was well known in the department that he would have sex with black female prostitutes and informants and fathered a number of children according to court documents. In the 1980s, he forced Rose McIntyre to perform oral sex to save her boyfriend from a false arrest. He then arrested her son Lamont for double murder after she blocked a second sexual encounter. Rose's son was exonerated after spending 23 years in prison. The courts looked at the case finally and said he committed no crime whatsoever. There's more. The the McIntyre's case exposed this detective initially who retired in 2010 as a captain. See, this is what happens. He's corrupt for decades, he doesn't get demoted. He doesn't get charged, he doesn't get walked out of the facility in embarrassment. He gets promotion after promotion after promotion. Here's the great irony of this story and this saga with this corrupt detective. The women that he sexually assaulted, they were locals who literally paid his salary. They were paying for their own oppression by way of government mandate. He was a captain, a leader in their community. There's more. Attorneys for the McIntyre family claim in the lawsuit the detective preyed on about 70 women. I'm sure that's a severe undercount. He is reportedly facing a grand jury and state investigation. Williams said she hopes he is indicted and sent to prison. So that's the criminal aspect, that criminal aspect is continuing, okay? Lamont and Rose McIntyre, remember the family that he completely turned upside down? Lamont and Rose McIntyre received 12.5 million in a settlement from the unified from the unified government of Wayandet County, Kansas City. Kansas at the end of June. It was a far cry from the nearly 100 million they actually sought. But the state law blocks Williams, whose son was also arrested for, for, for double murder from suing. Isn't that interesting? He gets over 20 years in prison because of a corrupt cop. All of the judicial system is aware that he spent this time in prison because of the corruption that they allowed. And he's unable to even sue the man who did all of this criminal activity to land him behind bars because of a state statute.